You know those problems sometimes that teachers give you on your homework that you're like, why are you giving me this type of problem? This is one of those problems. It might look a little crazy and confusing to you, but it's actually a really great problem to review rationalizing the zetomer as well as our radical operations. There's a couple things though I want you to know about rationalizing the denominator. The first thing is understanding the difference of two squares. So whenever I have a binomial times a binomial, and this in case is a minus b times a plus b, notice I have a and b are exactly the same. And one we're subtracting, one we're adding. When I multiply that out, when I apply distributive property or FOIL, whatever, I'm going to get an a squared minus b squared. Now you might be thinking, well, that doesn't really mean that pattern. Like, how is that going to be helpful over here? Well, the reason why that's going to be helpful here is because if I'm squaring radicals, what happens when we square radicals, right? If I take the square root of x, quantity squared, what is that going to give me? An x. Right? And so the idea or the purpose here of rationalizing the denominator here is to get rid of our radicals in the denominator. Now, the next thing we want to do is just kind of remember a couple operations with radicals. The first one is going to be the product property. When I have the square root of x times the square root of y, as long as the index is the same, you're just going to multiply the two radicands together and you're going to keep it under the square root. And then when we're adding two square roots, this is really important. You have to not only have exactly the same radicand, but you also have the same index, just like we did with multiplication. So for multiplication, it doesn't matter if the radicands are different, you just multiply them. However, for addition here, they have to be the same index as well as the same radicand. So for instance, if I had square root of x plus the square root of y, that is just the square root of x plus the square root of y, right? I can't simplify that any further. That's like combining x plus y is like, they're not the same. But you can combine two and just notice there that's a two, two square root of x's. We already have like a little two in that case. We wanna rationalize the denominator of this thing. So what we wanna do is we want to create the difference of two squares, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in parentheses. If this is one part of the difference of two squares, what do I need to multiply this by to achieve this difference of two squares? Well, hopefully you recognize that's going to be the square root of x plus the square root of y. Now, and if you're in my class, then you would have heard this over and over and over again. Whatever you do in the denominator, you have to make sure you do in the numerator. And then remember, I don't want to multiply. I don't want to keep it written like this because if you keep it written like this, what this is telling me mathematically is just the square root of y times this. And that's not the case. We are multiplying this times everything in the top. So therefore, I'm gonna to wanna to insert parentheses to remind myself because it's very easy to forget and also make mistakes if you don't insert these parentheses. Now what I need to do is apply the distributive property. So we're gonna multiply this times this, that times that, this times this, that times that. And we're gonna do the same thing for the denominator. Okay, so this is a lot going on, I get it. Let's go ahead and kind of do these one by one and then we'll go ahead and simplify everything. Three, square root of x times square root of x. Now I didn't talk about when we have a number in front. When you do have coefficients in front, you're just gonna multiply those coefficients. Okay, so it looks something like that if a and b were going to be real numbers. So in this case, it's really a three times one times an x, and this is x times x, which is going to be an x squared. But what do we know about the x squared? The square root of x squared. It's just gonna be x, right? So therefore, this is just gonna be a three x. Then I have a three square root of x times the y. So I'm gonna multiply the x and the y. Here, I have a square root of y times the square root of x. So therefore, that's gonna be a y times x. Or if you wanna have them the same, which a lot of times students do, I'll just rewrite it as x times y. And then I have the square root of y times the square root of y, which again is going to be the square root of y squared, which is just going to be a y. And now my denominator, now you can multiply this out if you want to, or you can recognize the difference of two squares. You're basically just squaring the first two terms, a squared, squaring the last two terms, b squared, and then you have the difference of them. So square root of x times square root of x is going to be square root of x squared, which is going to be an x. And then here I have square root of y times square root of y, which is going to be a y. All right, now, before you do finish this problem, be careful. Notice that I have two radicals with the exact same radicand. So therefore, I can finally go ahead and combine these together. Now again, just like we did up here, remember this is a one plus one, right? Or one and a one, so therefore they got two. So in this case, I'm gonna do a three plus one, which is going to give me a four. All right, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If your teacher ever gives you this problem on your homework, you are all set to go. So hopefully this video gave you some value and it helped you out. And if it did, then I know you're gonna enjoy the next video.